certainly out of a passion and an energy to tell this story with Steven Spielberg. It's going to change hearts and minds. It is going to make people think. It'll make them weep. Maybe the cure for AIDS was incinerated in Auschwitz in 1943. It is an enormously wonderful piece of storytelling about a very extraordinary man. He helped me and my family and the 13 other 100 people who he saved so that we could survive. The list. Hello, I'm Ben Kingsley. I co-star with Liam Neeson in a new film by Steven Spielberg, a remarkable and powerful film. Please join us as he features Schindler's List. Oscar Schindler was a humanist, a man filled with contradictions. Bit of a gambler, bit of a, you know, a fun merchant who's out to make money from the war effort. He arrived in uh, Krakow, 1939, as only a businessman can, saw the potential of this town. Big smile, big smile. He seduced pretty much uh, everybody who could help him get his factory off the ground and buy his pots and pans, his mess kits, and he made a fortune doing it. We're doing well. Yes. Better this month than last? Yes. Any reason to think next month will be worse? The war could end. He was uh, in the Oscar Schindler business for a lot of his career, but something happened along the road that changed him. I go to work the other day. Everybody's gone. They're not gone. Yeah, here. He made a considerable fortune. But this money that he earned, he spent every last cent of it to save these Jewish lives. Oscar Schindler had to formalize a list in order to purchase his workers. Chaim Novak, Rebecca and Joseph Bell. Helen Hirsch. Adam Levin. Holbeck and Mila Pfefferberg. At a time when there was no kindness in the world, and lives were saved and generations were created. And that's the essence of what this story is, that one individual can change things. I met Schindler in 1939 in November when I escaped from the prisoner of war camp. I was an officer in the Polish army and I escaped and I came home and he promised in 1939 that who will be with him, he will make a point to save the life of those people. He knew what will happen from the beginning. He knew exactly. This is Amon Ged on his balcony, you see? He was standing on his back balcony with his rifle and he was shooting people. by the SS to do one job, to murder. I prepared by trying to um, maybe locate the part of myself that could possibly behave in that way. What's a person worth? No, 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 no. What's one worth to you? This is a man doing his job. He says that when he's about to shoot this architect. She says, he says, shoot her, and she says, I'm only doing my job. And he says, yeah, I'm doing mine. When he killed the first person, maybe he has remote uh, feelings, you understand? But the 10, 100, 1,000, 20,000, it doesn't matter anymore, you see? You don't have any money. Not that kind of money. You know anybody? Jews, yeah, investors. 
Isaac Stern's journey throughout the film is, um, I think, a beautiful piece of 20th century Jewish history. He met uh, Oskar Schindler and became the accountant for this German businessman, entrepreneur. Let me understand. They put up all the money, I do all the work. What if you don't mind my asking, what you do? I'd make sure it's known the company's in business. I'd see that it had a certain panache. This relationship between Isaac Stern and Schindler made it possible for uh, 1,200 Jews to survive in hell. Moska, who is it? I play Emily Schindler, who was married to Oskar Schindler. She married him quite young, she was about 18 years old. She was German, uh, from the Sudetenland. You've done well here. Emily Schindler is a quite extraordinary woman. It was my privilege to meet her at the end of filming, in fact. There are now 6,000 people who are alive as a result of Oscar Schindler and Emily Schindler's work. How they put their talent to portray those people. I even discussed this with Mr. Ben Kinsley and he put an extraordinary portrait of the Ichustan. And so the same Mr. Liam Neeson. He played Oscar like he was an Oscar. When I saw him riding the horse, when I saw him talking to the people, when he talked to me, the sound of his voice it was also magnetic like Oscar Schindler voice. Uh, and uh, Mr. Rall finds his extraordinary young man to play a such difficult role to be when he himself inside is a soul like a butter. He give extraordinary performance and they all deserve recognition as actors. We filmed Schindler's List on many of the original locations, the factory at Brindlitz and the uh, infamous and horrendous concentration camp Auschwitz. We'll tell you more about these experiences when E Features continues.
with a, f a fantastic script and an individual like Steven, who's the consummate filmmaker, um, you basically start out with page one. Going to Krakow, Poland to do the movie, you know, where it took place was, was a marvelous decision because it gave us the right background. It's impossible not to confront history every, every moment that you're there. Uh, you feel a great sense of responsibility. I respectfully report I've been given orders to clear the bundles from the road, so there will be no obstructions to the thoroughfare. Thomas, enjoying the lines, little Polish picking soldier. Some of the actual locations that we shot at were the exterior of the actual uh, original enamelware factory, the DEFA factory, uh, the interior of Schindler's apartment, uh, Auschwitz. Um, we actually f did not film inside Auschwitz, we filmed outside the gates of Birkenau and the streets. What was kind of eerie was walking the streets of Krakow and realizing that 40 some years, 50 some years before, that this uh, great agony had taken place for a lot of people. Where I was standing, being a Jew 50 years ago, was a death sentence, an automatic death sentence. All you have to do, therefore, is react to it, and the camera will get an absolutely spontaneous reaction to somebody standing in Krakow witnessing 12 people being shot, because that's what we were. That's what happened. what Steven Spielberg was doing with over 32,000 people working on the picture. That, that he's a genius. They listen to him, they adore him. We all evolved it under his sort of patriarchal vision and care and love. The Polish people of Krakow who played the Jewish people, you understand? They put their heart, their sufferings, because the weather was so horrible was below zero temperature, freezing, and they're staying from 5 o'clock in the morning, sometimes to 6 o'clock in the evening. I think we all kind of keep together out of a sense of all for one and one for all, you know? From the first moment that I started to work on this project, I tried to make my best and all my knowledge that I know about the concentration camps, about the Holocaust, to give to Stephen. You see, I made uh, a couple more movies about Holocaust, Selfish Choice, and uh, this one was, uh, this was one that was the most documentary for me. This was like a cinema verite, and everything was so, so real. We made so real atmosphere that for example, in the scene when these little children are coming toward the trucks and the singing, and I know that what will happen because I prepare them. I, I went to the schools, I give them notes and teach them how to sing this Mamachi song. But when they came toward us, I remember when I was in the same position 50 years ago and I started to cry and Stephen came to me and comforted me and, and he said something very nice. He said, this sequence I will dedicate to you. One person that has uh, seen the film, came to me and wanted to know where we got the stock footage, which was kind of a compliment in a way, because uh, it hit him as being so realistic. It's, you know, the knowledge that every frame of film that Stephen put on the screen was, was done by him. Our director, Steven Spielberg, insisted from the beginning that this film should be in black and white. And we'll discuss the reasons why when E Features returns to discuss Schindler's List.
Stephen is um, a born uh, cineast, cinematographer, filmmaker. It's a, it's it's intuitive gift, and it's very exciting. It was exciting and inspiring to be around someone who was who whose gift was galvanized possibly more than ever before by the subject matter that he was dealing with. I know he acquired the rights about 10 years ago, and I, th I think within himself, he didn't feel mature enough to film it 10, 11 years ago. Uh, he wanted to wait until he was right in his soul uh, and in his head to do this to the best of his ability. My yes. computer's gonna break yes. down yes. and I'll never yes. get the disc yes. again. Uh, SS Contacts, list lower drawer of my desk, which you handle as cash contributions to legitimate charities sent, of course, through each official's office. Dealings with our black market contacts listed as suppliers in the legitimate ledger. Oh, forget more it. complicated. What do you mean? Forget it. it you can't forget headache. it. You it can't gives forget me a headache. it. Fair director, don't let things fall apart. I work too hard. Stylistically, he had some very, very um, set ideas about how he wanted to approach this film, um, all of which were quite, quite brilliant. He wanted kind of documentary fly on the wall technique. He used a lot of handheld camera. Um, he uh, was very into big sequences. His energy was quite phenomenal in shooting this film. His energy and his passion and his his astuteness to detail, not just in character but in every, every department of the film. I found him incredibly releasing as an actor. You're always encouraged to explore, to try different things. Um, never the sense of being contained or repressed in a way that was, would be creatively destructive or difficult. There's always a sense of going forward, trying out new things. There is a, an opening for a job away from all this backbreaking work at the new villa. Uh, which of you has um, domestic experience? Yeah, on second thoughts, I don't really want someone else's maid. All those annoying habits I have to undo. Stephen knew that this was a huge movie and he didn't have his usual budget, and uh, we were fighting against the weather. We needed snow at certain times, and we needed the snow to disappear at other times. And um, uh, Stephen worked very, very fast. This is going to sound strange, I know, but it was as, as if there was a, a divine hand watching over this production from the beginning. Um, the weather, for example. When we needed the extreme cold, the snow, we had it. When we no, no longer needed it, it disappeared. A couple weeks later, there was a scene that Stephen decided he would like to have in the film, and lo and behold, it snowed that weekend and then was immediately gone. It was, um, it was meant to be. I mean, the film, everything about it, just, well, it was like clockwork. He likes good-looking women. He sees a beautiful woman he doesn't think. <laughs> All right, you know, she was Jewish. He shouldn't have done it, but you didn't see this girl. I saw this girl. This girl was, oh. <laughs> Very good looking. I think the reason that he, he wanted to film it in black and white because it was right for this particular story. Uh, even as a child, I remember, I was 10 years old when the war ended, but I remember going to the theater on the weekends and seeing movie tone news. And every image that I ever saw personally was in black and white. I was wary of it in the beginning. I thought, but you're going to lose so much. But now that I see it, it's so much richer for being in black and white. It's uncompromising. There's nothing glamorous about it. They cast a spell on you, you know, the Jews. When you work closely with them, like I do, you see this. They have this power. It's like a virus. Some of my men are infected with this virus. They should be pitied, not punished. They should receive treatment, because this is as real as typhus. I see this all the time. It's a matter of money. Color would have beautified it in a sense. And this made it a little bit more realistic and brought it for everyone, I think, a little bit more to terms with, with the subject matter. And if, again, for me personally, and I think for most people when they see it, they'll realize that they are drawn into the film and become a part of it. You're offering me a bribe? A bribe? No. 
No, please. It's a gratuity. We'll shed more light on Schindler's List when E Features returns just after this. something immensely uplifting and cleansing about being told a story and about being allowed to grieve. If we are not allowed to grieve, we are missing out on an enormous leap forward in our humanity. This is something that is very important for me and for future, for my grandchildren, for my friends, for the survivors, for those who perish, you understand? Because people denying this, this situation, you see? I think this is a film that is going to reopen the whole debate about the Holocaust. It's going to change hearts and minds. It is going to make people think. It will make them weep. It will also make them go out and think and talk. I think the film's greatest achievement is going to, to tell the world, number one, that one man can make a difference. Uh, and maybe number two, that there is a moment in history that we can never forget, and we must never forget. God knows what was burned to death. God knows. The cure for AIDS, the cure for cancer, the greatest astronomers and astrologers. Who knows what went up the chimney? And it's only 50 years ago. People forget, they say it's history. It's not history, it's, it's now. Um, and I think we were very aware when we were making this film 
how it was about now. We had Croats on this, you know, film. Uh, Branko Lustig, one of the producers, he was in Auschwitz, and he's a Croat, and his uh, country's falling apart. I'm proud that the film was made, and that's the most important thing. That I came to America only seven years ago with War and Remembrance. I stay here. And uh, two days ago, when I drive to Sunset Boulevard, and I saw this big board with my name on it. I was thinking, look, a little Jewish boy from Auschwitz to Sunset. And I was very proud of myself. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ben Kingsley. Salad, the latest in food. On the next.